Well, I was told that. <laughs> Larry Coffrey. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, I should have bought the tickets at that time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. I did that with my motorcycle years and years ago, 20 years ago, and I sold it. I slid around the side, I sold it. I did see her flash. Ernie Ray Al. Ernie Ray Al. Okay. I would have sold it. I would have sold it. What? Are you guys going to pay it? No, she wouldn't either. So she's got to go over there and practice. I know Betty used to work there at the library, and she'd say people come in there with little kids and they'd take out 10 videos instead of. Absolutely. Well, reading is how you learn stuff. Exactly. Watching videos is uh, no way to learn Three-year-olds say it depends all the time. Depends on where you went to school. Really? Yeah. Really? We're talking about libraries becoming video stores. We are. That's what's really wrong with buying books, you know, they cost you a lot. We call this meeting of the Washera County Board of Supervisors to order, Hi, and we'll start with a roll call. Mrs. Krentz. Here. Mrs. Kim. Here. Mr. Piazzi. Here. Mr. W. Ashton. Mr. Jones. Here. Mr. Eckstein. Here. Mrs. Plata. Here. Mr. Weiss. Here. Mr. Gellerup. Here. Mr. Crawford. Here. Mr. Kirschner. Here. I will stand and have a silent prayer and then the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Now it's time for our public comments, and we have two people registered tonight. And the first one is Camille Stelmakowski. Yeah. 
I've done this before, does that work? I'm Camille Schnellnathussi, and I'd like to address the board regarding developing Washera County cross-country ski trails as means of economic development and enhancing the lives of our residents. Last year, there was a drastic reduction in the available trails from 18.4 kilometers to 12.4 kilometers, a loss of 33%. Reasons given for eliminating trails include labor costs to clear and groom the trails, equipment maintenance costs, and fewer staff being available during the winter months. The park supervisor also states that people don't use the trails. Concerns regarding apparent low usage of trails in past could be explained by inadequate snow, people not knowing trails existed, and trails not being groomed or of long enough length to provide good skiing. There are two major reasons to further develop cross-country skiing opportunities in Washera County, tourism and outdoor recreation for local residents. Tourism is an important source of revenue for Washera County, which prides itself on being a four-season outdoor recreational area. Our central location attracts people from Madison, Milwaukee, the Fox Valley, and other areas. Washera County should be seen as a destination for winter recreation and should be promoting not just winter hunting, fishing, and snowmobiling, but also cross-country skiing and snowshoeing. Currently, trails of five kilometers around a cornfield provide no incentive to come to our area and ski. Washera County Community Improvement Plan, a locally based initiative, cites obesity and lack of physical activity as one of its priority focus concerns. Cross country skiing is an inexpensive life sport, unlike football and baseball, and can be enjoyed by all ages and levels of physical ability. We have a significant population of senior citizens who are active and interested in keeping fit. Skiing gets people outdoors in the winter and can help fight cabin fever and depression. I request that the board consider a two-year trial program to enhance cross-country skiing in Washera County through one, expanding our ski trails to their original length and return the trails to the wooded areas. Two, utilizing trail fee boxes to offset costs, and three, marketing cross-country skiing in our county by distributing a simple informative ski trail brochure through existing sites for tourism materials and informing local residents through local print media as the artist. Thank you. Thank you. And our next uh, speaker is Scott Schumann, who is our parks director. Thanks for listening. I'm here representing the Washera County Parks and the Washera County Public Works Committee. The Washera County Parks Department has reduced the amount of cross-country ski trails from about 18 kilometers to about 12.5 kilometers in the last year. The reason for the reduction was cuts in budget and staffing. It became necessary to limit the amount of grooming to less than one day per grooming or tracking pass. The portions of the trail eliminated were based on location and ownership. Areas farthest away from the trailheads were the first to be cut. The majority of skiers never even saw the farthest sections of the trail. County-owned property was given priority when making these decisions. The Parks Department has been working on ski trails on county property for use during the summer for hiking also. More improvements and additions have been made to trails on county parkland for the good of all, pers all persons in all seasons. When comparing Washera County to neighboring counties, we feel like our system is still very good. Portage County has an excellent cross-country system at Standing Rocks Park, but they also have a much larger population and tax base. Wapaka, Adams, Marquette, and Green Lake counties do not maintain ski trails. Winnebago County has a short trail that circles athletic fields at Community Park. The Washera County Parks Department will continue to try to make improvements to existing trails, especially on county property, and will maintain these trails for skiing and hiking as long as the County Public Works Committee continues to budget for this activity at current levels. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, that's the end of our public comments. People registered. Next, we have an agenda. We need a motion to approve it. Motion by Larry. Second by Bill Downey. Any discussion on the agenda? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? That's been approved. Minutes of our July 19th, 2011 meeting. How do you find on those? I'll make a motion we approve the minutes. Motion I'll by Donna second. Clana. Second by Mrs. Krentz. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor of that say aye. 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 Opposed? That's been approved. There's no old business and new business. We're going to have some reports now on bonding project updates. And Ruth Zelsky, our corporation counsel, will be giving us the information. Um, in front of all of you, I put a uh, short list that kind of gives you a quick update on what's happening with the bonding projects. Um, as far as courthouse security, the new fire alarm system is almost completely installed. Uh, Faith Technologies believes they'll be done within the next couple of weeks. They're working on uh, redoing and updating the panic alarms as well, and they're going to be pulling some lines for our new phone system while they're here. So all the little red things that you see up in the ceilings, those are our new fire um, suppression alarm system. Um, so that's going really well. The work, re work release remodel and the demolition of the South Annex are currently on hold. The architect that is assisting us with the design is currently getting the kitchen project ready for bid, and once that is out for bid and we have that under control, then we'll start on the design for the remodel downstairs. Uh, the tower project continues to move along. Uh, we have entered into the contracts with Bug Tussle for co-location on all of the towers, between our towers and their towers. We've got, obtained all of our zoning approvals, and so has Bug Tussle. The, um, commercial building permits have now been obtained um, for our two sites. The electrical service is installed and awaiting for Adams Columbia to do the final hookup. Rebar was delivered to the Plainfield site yesterday, so we continue to move along on that project. The Sheriff's Department went live with their records management project yesterday. Um, the film and representatives are still on site working out some of the training. The storage system for the computers. Um, the first phase has been purchased and is working. The second phase um, will be being made over um, at the Sheriff's Department um, and the North Annex. The telephone system, the equipment is ordered. Uh, we're going to be moving everything to charter for internet and telephone and bundling all of that along with the cable for the jail. So that is all in process. Um, and that's kind of where we're at in a nutshell. The sheriff's here, Deb's here, so if you have any questions that any of us can answer. Any questions? Apparently not. Well, thank you, Ruth. Yep. Ruth, can you grab the microphone and bring it back with you? going to have a presentation on grievance procedures under Act 32, and Deb Berenger, our administrative coordinator, will be telling us all about it. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, promised I'll make this fast. We're not acting on anything tonight. Uh, this is an informational presentation. We will need to act on this at our next meeting in September because this grievance procedure has to be in place by October 1st. So I just wanted to give you a little background. Am I too loud? Is this too loud? No? <laughs> All right. Okay. So it's, uh, it's a grievance procedure that all, all municipalities need to have in place by October 1st. This is state law. And the, it doesn't give us a lot of information on what they, what has to be in there. I mean, it, it, it tells us some different elements, but it doesn't give us a lot of definition. So it has to be a written document that specifies the process the grievance and employer must follow. You have to have an impartial hearing officer that the grievance is heard by, and you have to have an appeal process. So it has to be in place by October 1st, and then those other three things that are outlined there. So right now, the uh, personnel committee has been working on this for about three months with the help of um, Dan Borowski from the Phillips Borowski law firm. 
And so the primary components are pre-grievance procedures. So what happens up until this grievance takes place? And so it isn't actually in the policy, but it's going to be what the managers and the supervisors and all the department heads follow. And then all the definitions and the rules of procedure for the grievance and the appeal and then the limitations. So the pre-grievance procedure is something that Ruth and I will work on with the department heads to try to get designed to make sure that we're following due process because you want to have good policies because you want to keep good people working here. And you're going to follow best practices so that when you do make the decision, a lot of good information has gone into that. So definitions, one is termination. What exactly do you mean by termination? Everybody has a different idea what that means. So the way to start this is you exclude things. So we're not going to talk about layoffs. It's not going to be workforce reduction. It's not going to be transfers. It's not going to be when someone retires. It's not going to be voluntary resignation. So a termination truly is when someone is let go for anything other than these reasons. Uh, discipline. So discipline is a lot of different things too. And so the committee has decided that it should be a suspension of more than one day because you have oral reprimands, you have written reprimands, you have performance evaluations, you have plans of improvement. There's all kinds of things that somebody else could define as, as a discipline under a definition. But this is what the personnel committee has decided. And then a termination when someone's really let go, but it's based on performance issues. And if someone is demoted due to performance issues. So those are the three things that um, the personnel committee has decided would be the definition of discipline. Some of the things that are excluded again would be a plan of correction, performance evaluations, oral or written, and um, non-disciplinary wage or benefit adjustments. So now you have to decide who is your employee? Who are you talking about here? So the committee has talked about regular full-time or regular part-time. Um, we're excluding limited term employees, seasonal employees, independent contractors, political appointees, and then people that would still be covered under an, a collective bargaining agreement that have grievance procedures in their bargaining agreement. The one thing that we're going to talk about tomorrow is what is the definition of part-time? Like how many hours a year do they have to work to, to fit that definition? How many continuous months have they had to work to fit that definition? So we will, we're going to keep working on this. Workplace safety, again, it says that you have to have a grievance procedure for workplace safety, but it doesn't define what workplace safety is. And so the personnel committee has decided that it's going to be violations of state or federal law. The county is under COM 32, which is the Department of Commerce, which is changing. I'm not sure what the department's name is going to be when this all shakes out. But we are under um, their OSHA regs, basically, but it's um, the Department of Commerce um, governs the public sector. And so what we're saying in this particular procedure is that the employee needs to come to us first before they file a grievance to give us time to address the issue. We've always been very proactive with our safety, and so we want to have the opportunity to fix it before it goes to a grievance. So the grievance, some of you that have been on the personnel committee have had lots of opportunities to hear grievances. There's always a written format. The grievant has to tell you what is going on, what the problem is. Um, there's always deadlines. There's different steps that are taken. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we allow legal representation. Um, the hearing officer has to be an impartial hearing officer. Discovery, these are things that Ruth's much more familiar with, but there's certain things that, like, what's your list of witnesses? What kind of um, evidence are you going to be presenting? And then one of the things that I think is very important for you to understand is the standard of review is a rational basis. Was it a rational decision that the county made? Um, and then we have an appeal to the county board. That's it. So anyway, what I did give you is the draft that we have up to this point. And so if you want to look this over, if you have questions, 
There are things that are probably going to change between now and next month because we're not quite through the whole document yet. But if you have a chance, if you'd like to read this over ahead of time, I know it's a lot to read and a lot to digest, but I did want to give you a little heads up because it's an important thing that we have to adopt, and again, we have to have it in place by October 1st. So um, please be free, feel free to give me a call or Ruth a call and tell us what you, know, what you like, what you don't like, because this is going to be your grievance procedure. So yes, Everett. Um, some of these are uh, grayed out. Uh, that's just highlighted, I assume? The grayed out are things that we haven't actually decided yet, Okay, where it's very much in gray. <laughs> Those are things that we're actually going to talk about tomorrow. So, um, for example, the definition of a regular part-time is somebody who works over 1,200 hours a year. Now, the logic between that is that is what the states adopted for their part-time that are eligible for Wisconsin retirement system and for health insurance. So it isn't just an arbitrary number. Well, maybe it was arbitrary on their part, but that's what we based it on. Um, and then if for an employee, though, for the workplace safety, it would be any employee. It would be anybody that is um, part of the Washera County system. And the reason, because we do believe that workplace safety is very important, it's for everyone. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Any questions of Deb? Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Deb. On the agenda discussion of possible action items, one is elected officials retirement. This is something that the new law through the governor's budget came into play, and uh, this is something we should look at tonight. Yes, um, in your packet there was a little bit of a summary about this, but I just go over a few key points here because this is a decision that the county board has to make. Act 10 was the act that is commonly referred to as the budget repair bill. Um, that was, went through the court system, it was published, <coughs> it is now law, it became law um, July 1st. As part of that act, it took away various collective bargaining rights, but it also mandated that the county stop paying the employee's share of the retirement for the state retirement fund. Um, actually, the state can't pay it either. But there was a few rules in that that said that, um, for instance, if you are under a collective bargaining agreement, this doesn't impact you until your collective bargaining agreement expires. So we have employees who are under collective bargaining agreements until the end of the year. This would not impact them till January. When the budget bill passed in Act 32, the state made some additional tweaks to this part of the budget repair bill. Specifically, they indicated that um, supervisory manager employees who are managing protected or public safety employees do not have to pay retirement unless the employees that they're managing are paying it. Now remember, public safety employees are the people that the state has exempted out of the collective bargaining um, part of the budget repair bill. So if you're a public safety employee, you still are going to have all of your collective bargaining rights prior that you had prior to Act 10 being in place. In Washera County, that is the sworn deputies and EMS. So the supervisors for those two groups um, would also follow whatever their contracts would follow. And their contracts are up at the end of the year and we'll be bargaining with them. So specifically, oh God. Um, the sheriff and um, <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Um, the sheriff and um, some of the lieutenants, not the chief deputy, because he was not under a protected class before, but the ones who were protected um, will not have to pay retire their share of the retirement until and if their union people have to pay that. Um, the same goes with like Tim over in EMS because he's supervising that EMS group. 
So one of the questions became, what happens to elected officials? The language is actually very silent on it between the two acts. Um, the state really didn't come right out and say one way or another what you need to do. I want you to remain seated, Dave. So the county board at that point in time 
now. Any questions? Yeah, Ruth, when do we need to make that decision by? Well, you need to make it this meeting because it would come out of the April assessment that next happens meeting. before uh, the next meeting. And that deadline is set by the statute because it says that we need to start taking care of all these other people that are eligible. Donna? No, it's my understanding that if we decide to take this out or take take the their share out or have them pay their share, that if it is decided in court, then they would get that money back, yes. right? Yes, if, if, okay. if somebody, if it goes to court and the court says, no, you cannot take that from them, you will be writing a letter that this is a check for reimbursement for the money that you took out of their paycheck. And the same thing goes if we decide not to ha take it out of their check and then the court decides that yes, we, ca we should have, then they pay us Correct. a lump sum. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ruth? Yeah. Will it be possible ever for all the countywide compensation and the retirement issues to have a common start and end date? No. No. Oconto County just did their interest ARB today, okay. either yesterday or today, and that was one of the issues. So we should have an answer on that fairly soon and how that particular hearing examiner is going to decide. Can you speak to the mem memorandum from uh, these other attorneys? Oh, that was the Andy uh, Phillips Borowski one. Thank you. 
Wouldn't it be easier to take it out and, and, and pay it back later if we have to than to collect it back, uh, from them later? That's what the county, the attorney we're using, Philip Borowski, recommended. Everybody pays it in, and then the ones that give it back through courts or something like that, then we write a check back to them. That's what, that's what he's recommending to the county. <coughs> Donna? I'm going to make a motion that we do begin taking um, the retirement out of each individual person with the idea that if this is overturned, then we, we can write the check and pay it back to them. I would second that motion. We've got a motion by Donna and second by Fred. Now, any discussion on that motion? Everybody understand the motion? Ruth did a good job of explaining it. Okay, all in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Opposed to the motion? Motion's been approved for taking it out. Okay, our next is a motion to approve update to our Washera County Public Participation Plan. Who's going to speak to this? Patrick can. Okay, Patrick.
Any questions? If not, we need a motion to approve it. Motion. Motion I'll by second. Everett, second by Mrs. Krentz. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of that say aye. 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 Opposed? And approved. Is that consideration possible action on the following resolutions and ordinance? Resolution 30-8-11 regarding the dedicated work and contributions of Star Hawk to the residents of Washera County and the Department of Human Services. We need a motion by Donna Collada. I, I would second, please. Second by Fred Gellerup. All in favor of that say aye. 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 Opposed? It's been approved. Resolution 31-8-11 regarding the dedicated work Barb Stanky to the residents of Washera County and the Department of Human Services. Motion by Joe Piaski. Second by Mrs. Krentz. All in favor of that say aye. 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 Opposed? It's been approved. Resolution 32-8-11 regarding the dedicated work and contributions of Roger Charette to the residents of Washera County and the Department of Human Services. I would move the approval of that resolution. Motion by Fred. I'll second. Second by Mark Kirshner, Any, all in favor of that say aye. 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 Opposed, that's been approved. Resolution 33-8-11, resolution authorizing park superintendent to apply for trail aids under statute 23.09 paren 26. Motion to approve. Motion by Donna Collada, second by Everett Eckstein. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor of that say aye. 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 Opposed? That's been approved. Ordinance number 534, an ordinance amending chapter two, article six of the Washera County Code relating to retention of records. Motion by Larry. Seconded by Donna Collada. Any discussion on the retention of records? It was sent in your packet. Not all in favor of that say aye. 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 Opposed? That's been approved. Do we have a proclamation designating September as jury appreciation month? Signed by the judge and the district attorney or the clerk of courts. All in favor of that proclamation? We have a motion. <laughs> I'd second. Okay, we've got a motion by Donna Clown, the secretary Fred Gellerup. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's been approved. Any suggestions for our next board meeting? Just a quick um, reminder. Uh, in September, uh, the Land, Water, and um, Education Committee is asked to hold our meeting in Aurora and do a fall tour. So I'll be sending out information about that in more detail shortly. It's Aurora Town Hall then. Adjourn. Motion by Everett next time to adjourn. Second by Fred Gather up. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. <coughs> nope. <laughs> you got it. The main thing. The main thing better is I, I, I get these all the time anyway. <coughs> but how come you shut Ruth off? But if you need it, I can just get <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it. Just take it, because I'll probably get one tomorrow. Batteries probably died in your mic. They're all scared to hear that early. You gotta replace them a lot, I know that. Can yeah. replace him? That's okay with me. I like early You're a morning meeting. person, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Coffee is up at the six o'clock or something. Sorry about that, Ruth. It was okay because I was only getting more and more confused as a lot of you went.